I have developed something of a reputation for being more visually focused than a lot of other anime critics, and this fact frankly confuses me. If narrative storytelling was at the top of my priority list when consuming media, then watching anime instead of reading books would be outright foolish. I understand that if you prefer an audiovisual entertainment medium even while favoring narrative as the most important thing in making it good, you might not be able to find the kinds of narratives which resonate most strongly with you in any other filmic medium besides animation. But when you think about the medium this way, it's almost as if the appreciation for it is born from desperation over actual intrinsic interest in the medium. It's almost as though if there were some way of communicating these narratives visually without having to animate them, then it wouldn't even matter that they were illustrated in the first place. Obviously, I feel differently. I've written more than enough words to justify the idea that aesthetic is a storytelling proponent in and of itself, but actually translating specific aesthetics into language is particularly difficult, as it is indeed translation, and not between two languages which share the medium of speech, but between languages so fundamentally different that their nuances will be lost in one another's ether. The purplest prose and the loftiest metaphors will only give you a fraction of the truth, and a dry, literal description will only inform you of the nature of the language and none of what it actually communicates. You should be aware through your own observations that the level of thought or effort effort or knowledge or technical skill applied to creating something is only important in how it allows creation to happen, and not important to actually judging the message in and of itself. A particularly talented creator will have a more deft hand at conveying aesthetic ideas with greater depth, or may be capable of representing a greater number of aesthetic ideas, but the range of what is actually possible is so endless, and the abilities of any individual are so limited by every factor which gives them personal definition, that admiring Admiring the traits which I've described has less to do with aesthetic appreciation than a metatextual interest in human endeavor. A famous quote claims that writing about music is like dancing about architecture, and this is perfectly true. A common response is a desire to indeed watch a dance about architecture, and this is why we read writing about music. It's the same reason we enjoy concept albums retelling novels, or anime adaptations of manga, and so on and so forth. Some of these mediums have enough of the same language that not so much is lost in translation, but something like adding a soundtrack to a manga is inherently such a massive change to the message that it could alter it entirely. Reading Berserk without accounting for the anime, I would have probably just blasted Psy's imaginary Sonicscape the whole time, or scored the Eclipse to the Mars Volta's Cassandra Gemini, neither of which sounds anything remotely close to the show's actually phenomenal soundtrack, and the theme of Guts which at this point is inseparable from my understanding of the character. Amid my audience, there are those who love when I write more interpretively about media, some who only value more technical or informational writing, and others still who just want to track my quality judgments on a piece of work. I am glad to approach from whichever angle I feel most inspired to write from, but a lot of my ability to do so comes down to what I am actually capable of translating. Sometimes my extensive breakdown of technical details confuses the audience who doesn't see how these aspects of the work were important enough to merit my feelings but in many cases those are just the most tangible details which I am capable of putting into words. It's not as though I've never hated a work which was technically well crafted on the basis that I found it ugly and had no way to justify that feeling in words because I don't have an understanding of the feeling in that language. My feeling only exists in a part of my mind which interprets visual information and has a different relationship with it than the part of my brain that comes up with words. Likewise, I find it difficult to resonate with much writing that talks about audio or visual design. When a critic strings together a row of adjectives to describe a feeling, I can gleam a general idea of the wheelhouse of describable emotions which this aesthetic is similar to, but none of those words will give a complete or wholly accurate analog to the reality of what I will see or hear, and I am no more capable of providing one. Most of the time, a review will compound something of a random mishmash of technical analysis, emotional interpretation, and raw information, stopping arbitrarily at the meeting point of where the person's knowledge or ability to explain themselves ends, and where they feel they've said enough to make the point. After all, you can go into more and more detail to bring the audience further and further into your understanding of the subject, but you're never ever getting there, and going any further down the road of dragging your audience to it has diminishing returns. When I have the kind of eureka moment which leads to writing a video script, it isn't that I'm excited to be able to finally put all of my feelings into words. It's knowing that I can say something convincing enough that a great enough number of people will understand where I'm coming 
coming from that I will feel some level of connection to the world and people around me, and perhaps inspire enough feelings in others that they decide to give me money in exchange for those feelings. Every time I find another piece of the feeling which I can newly put into words, or a way to rephrase what I've already expressed which might resonate with a group who hadn't gotten the message before, I am then excited to expand that base and see how far my feelings can reach, even if I'm hardly scratching the surface of actually making myself clear. This is why I've never been satisfied by just writing, be it more expressive or informative. I've learned to bend language to my will and to capture all of the feelings which I have language for about as well as I possibly can. My writing sounds like the inner monologue of my mind, and that inner monologue is making a constant effort to translate as much of the other information living in my brain as it can. But when I create music, I can tap into a whole swatch of emotions which my words are downright incapable of. Even when I'm writing lyrics, they are just a limited interpretation of what the song is actually saying, and no amount of explanation will convey what the music actually makes me feel or what went into creating it. When I was a teenager, I considered it paramount that I might eventually create analytical reviews about each of my favorite things. And yet, writing about those things has always been by far the hardest thing to do. When my feelings are shallow or easily interpreted, they are likewise easy to explain, and leaving a lot of the more complex feelings on the cutting room floor isn't so scary because I don't feel so strongly about having my relationship with the work understood. I've written countless five minute videos which simply dump my most interesting thoughts about a show and then move on because while I do have feelings about all of the other aspects of the show, I am not interested in putting in the work to translate them as it won't give me any extra satisfaction to do so. When it comes to a favorite though, I am terrified of underselling it, of leaving anything off the table or making you think that my relationship with the work is more shallow than it really is. Even still, my cutoff point is inevitably arbitrary. I like to write hours long articles about my favorites just so that the audience can listen to so many words and get the impression that I must care a lot about this thing, even if I can just as easily do the same for something I don't care about in the slightest, as I did once for the asterisk war and then considered my work in that field to be complete. If we lived in a world where it was normal to go into hours of discussion about every single piece of work we consumed, and by God, it feels like we're going in that direction, then I might have to go on for even longer about my favorites just to convince you that they were something special. Again, for now, the only thing stopping me is diminishing returns and the tastes of myself and my audience, considering the worth of our time and lifespans as compared to the length of each endeavor. But it would be inauthentic of me to pretend that the only thing stopping me from going in-depth about everything I like is a lack of time or interest. I also frequently just do not have the means to express my feelings. Not only am I lacking the words, but I am lacking the drawing ability or musical talent or whatever else it would take to actualize the understanding of the subject which I have inside. My imagination has conjured works of illustrative art so specific and technical that I would need to practice for a decade to be good enough to recreate them, and the only way I could communicate them exactly in words would be to graph out the location of each color represented in the image down to a molecular level and read off that list of micropixels, which is not going to create any kind of image in your mind and would still require immense technical knowledge to even be capable of. It is with all of this in mind that I find myself incapable of explaining how it is that Urotsuki Doji is one of my favorite animated films. It's not that I couldn't explain how it relates to my tastes in a broad kind of way, or justify it just by pointing out the incredible technical achievement of the animation in crafting one of anime's most pronounced aesthetics to the highest level at which I've seen it represented, but that still doesn't really tell the whole story. I've got images from this film seared into my mind, and nothing I could tell you about myself and my past or my tastes is going to bring you much closer to understanding why I love this movie than you would be just by hearing what I've already said about it. I can just as easily imagine you taking one look at the movie and easily getting it or even agreeing as I can imagine you thinking that I just like anything which looks nice, which couldn't be more astronomically farther from the truth. Armageddon looks incredible, and that movie did basically nothing for me. And it's not as if Urotsuki Doji has some kind of riveting story to compensate. I couldn't tell you the first damn thing about what was actually going on in that movie, other than a lot of demons raped and murdered a whole lot of people. Considering how many hentai I've passed on which contain the same kind of content, I certainly wouldn't consider that to be the appeal either. 
At best, I can say that it gives me similar feelings to what I love so much about Devilman and all of the work which has risen from its influence. And while I can certainly put my feelings about Devilman into greater number of words, those don't exactly justify how I can also love Urotsuki Doji when it doesn't nearly earn its iconography narratively on the level which Devilman does. It's obvious that this imagery and tone reaches into a deep inner sanctum of my psyche, and attempting to describe what's in there just leads me down an endlessly sprawling pathway through my entire life story without ever really grasping whatever the point really was. If you don't already feel similarly to me, you might hear an endless onslaught of justifications and come away thinking, he feels that way because X and Y thing happened to him in his life. But that's really neither here nor there. The only important part of it all is that I am who I am, and who I am happens to resonate with this iconography. Explaining it more than that and giving you the impression that you understand would undercut the reality of the matter so extremely that I feel more comfortable throwing up my hands and saying, I can't explain.